Hello QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with the supplemental video to the January edition of QST. I write the Ask Dave column, which is this one, that's in every QST, and this is the January issue, and it says all about antennas. Now in this I mention a sloper, okay? This picture is taken from the ARRL handbook. I thought we'd go into a little bit more depth on the sloper. We'll describe what it is, model it, put a real one up, check to see what Whisper says it can do, and also do some real-time uh, switch back and forth between a vertical antenna and the sloper. Let's dive in. The name of the column, which is S. Dave, uh, was titled All About Antennas, because all of the articles worked on antennas. Uh, this fellow here, uh, Larry Hammer, AI9N, asks, uh, he's got uh, his 67-foot end-fed antenna. It's one end is at 35 feet and the other end is at 13 feet. He runs QRP, low power, usually 5 watts or less, and is seeking better antenna performance on 5 watts. If I raise the lower end of my antenna to 35 feet, would that improve reception? I think we're going to find the fact that you have one end at 35 feet and the other end a little closer to say 10 feet, 10 feet so people can walk under it. You'll have a great antenna. You could do what you're talking about, which is to raise the antenna all the way up. That'll be a good antenna too. So I thought what we'd do is model a sloper this is a view of a 40 meter sloper with this end uh, right here at 30 feet and this end at 10. Why 10? Because it's actually attached by a rope to a tree stump and the idea being that somebody can walk under here without hitting themselves on the antenna. Now let's uh, look at what we get. Now this thing mostly radiates straight up. But if you will note here if you come down to one S unit below, which would be 6 dB, it's right here. Notice that the angle for one dB down is pretty low. Same on the other side. And if your ionospheric hop comes off this side right here, you're going to do fairly well with this antenna. Here's the azimuthal pattern, which goes straight around. This is the nice thing about a sloper versus a dipole. A sloper, you get a pretty uniform pattern, whereas uh, with the dipole, you're going to see that uh, off the ends of the dipole, you'll lose some, and off the sides, you'll gain some. But notice this. I want you to notice this. Gain 6.89 over an isotropic radiator. The reason this is not 2.15, which is the book answer, is because we're taking into account real ground here. And the reflections from the ground are additive at certain angles to the antenna, so you get a very nice elevation pattern too. Now if we predict the SWR at this point for this antenna, it's under 3 to 1 across the band, under 2 to 1 across most of the band. I think we'll find in practice we'll do better. Now here's a picture of a real antenna. This is a single band 40 meter antenna which was made for an earlier video where we were comparing insulated wire versus uninsulated wire. This, it's kind of looking up at a weird angle which is why that's leaning in and that's leaning in. This is a 30 foot tall mast, the west end of it. This little piece right here is rope. And then this is the antenna feed point in the middle to the east. Notice my MFJ hex beam right here. And then this is the east end of it right here. The tree stump right here that that's attached to. By the way, this is the base of my step IR antenna. Now this big IR is a vertical. And what we're going to do is put this on 40 meters. We've got this on 40 meters. And we'll do a little back and forth comparison when we get there. Now, let's look at the actual SWR measured on my uh, 
a little vector, nano vector network analyzer, nano VNA. And it actually shows under two to one across the entire band. Does very nicely. And I thought what I'd do is put this thing on whisper, transmit whisper, and see where my signals went. You see they're kind of all around. Uh, out to Hawaii, down to South America, this one's over to Europe. Uh, and this is in the middle of the afternoon. Well, it's not in the middle of the afternoon. This is uh, just after dusk. It's still light in Hawaii. This is the gray line right here. Now, some people, it's hard to tell we've got blue on blue. So I thought I'd invert it and we get yellow on yellow, which I'm, I, I have to confess is not much better. But you do get an idea here. I am in the Rocky Mountains. Okay, I'm getting East Coast stations. I'm getting some West Coast stations and I'm getting a couple DX. Let's look at how this works in reality. I'm going to switch back and forth quite a bit between the vertical antenna and the sloper. You'll see that the sloper has a titch more noise. So you can tell which one is the sloper, but you'll see that the signal to noise ratio on almost all of these signals, and there are quite a few on the 40 meter band as I do this in the late afternoon. And it is receiving just fine on both. It's a fine antenna, will work very well for you, is far less expensive than that vertical antenna. So there you have it. We've taken a look at the sloper and it's actually not a bad antenna. So if you have only one high point, that you can attach an antenna, you can do one of two things. You can create a sloper like the one here, or just do an inverted V like I did in a previous video a few months ago that was using the same 30 foot mast I have. So until we next meet, 73.